So in some of my previous videos, I tested a bunch of spot welders and I quickly decided that the BIFRC spot welder was by far the best. Um, it has a very nice interface, the way it works and the way you select your power levels and just its overall performance was excellent. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, um, you kind of have to supply your own leads and these are high quality leads and everything is soldered onto it. Um, which reduces uh, any current drop, but with the right battery, this thing is fantastic. Um, now, some people have bought these and, you know, sort of maybe complained about uh, its performance or it burning out, but I've had no problems with this one um, a year now, and I've, I've built a number of batteries with it. And um, so I actually decided maybe I should buy another one. Um, just to t see if you know if they're still as good if they've made any design changes and uh, You know just test it out. So here it is. I just received it from Banggood um, They were actually on back order. I actually had to wait maybe two months two and a half months for this to arrive But it is here um, and here are the components and um, You have you do have to sort of assemble it yourself. So we'll do that in a second but first thing I want to do is just sort of visually check the build quality. Um, they have changed it. Um, you know, it, there's a couple of very interesting things here. These are the same revisions, 2020-03-04, 2020-03-04. So these are the same revisions, but this board is different. It's The PCB is a different PCB. This you know these contacts are not as gold the new the new board contacts are silver versus gold um, and I have to say like the soldering job on you know this little MOSFET or whatever over here just is is garbage compared to the original one so I don't know you know this and you know this board still has flux all over it versus the original board is just beautiful um, so I don't know what's going on here I don't know if this is a you know I, I was gonna say I don't know if this is a knockoff but I, I bought my original one from Banggood and this is I reordered from Banggood I noticed they you know they've gone to the effort of now serializing the boards um, I mean maybe they just change suppliers or, or change manufacturers or, or or you know did some cost cutting on it I mean it definitely it just it literally still has flux on all these components um, whereas the original one is just beautiful um, so anyways let me um, let's assemble this and do some testing with it and we will we will see what uh, you know how it goes now before we assemble it, I want to quickly talk about this capacitor and what its job is. My original board has no capacitor. This capacitor is kind of an afterthought. And what its job is, is to help with voltage sag. And what am I talking about? If you use a battery that is not very powerful, when the spot welder fires, the voltage on the battery will sag below 9 volts. A 12 volt battery, when you draw this current, the voltage will sag. If the voltage sags below 9 volts, 9 volts is the voltage threshold to cl for the MOSFETs to close again. If the voltage drops below 9 volts, the MOSFETs will get stuck open and you will burn out your MOSFETs almost instantly. And, and so a lot of people who are burning out these, these spot welders are actually using too weak a battery, which sounds weird, but it's actually having too weak a battery that causes the MOSFETs to burn out. And what this is for is this capacitor gets soldered on between the positive and the negative lead here. And it holds a little bit of charge and its job is to help stop the voltage dropping below 9 volts and and so as the voltage drops this will discharge 
and help keep the voltage above 9 volts just long enough for, so that the MOSFETs can reclose. Again, my original battery doesn't have it and I have had no problems with it. But probably part of that is the fact that I use a very powerful battery. This battery delivers over 400 amps. Um, and again, these things require like a minimum of 150 amps. Well, this is 400 amps. How do you calculate amps from one of these LiPos? Um, it all has to do with its C rating. Do you see that C rating? The C ratings is how many times its capacity it can discharge. So 80 times 5 amps. See, this is 5.2 amps, and that's an 80 C. So 80 times 5.2 amps, which is a little over 400 amps, that's what, it's dish, that's what it is capable of discharging. So you always take the, the C rating times the capacity to know how many amps this thing can deliver. So at 11 volts, this will deliver 400 amps at 11 volts. And um, I'm probably not, so because this is 400 amp capable, but realistically you're probably only getting to 300 amps through the wires, through all the restrictions and everything like that. And because you're not quite pulling what it's, what it's fully capable of, the voltage doesn't sag as much. And so these batteries, I've had no problems with a good LiPo running these batteries. Now I will, I will put this on just to, you know, do the directions and, and do it the new way. But um, anyways, let's, um, let's build this thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is put on the, um, the XT60 here. So it just goes in here, you flip it over and you're gonna have to put um, solder in four parts. Um, and these these two are electrical and these two are structural that hold the XT60 in place. And you are going to need a good soldering iron. You, you're not going to do this with a small little soldering iron because these are big connections onto a big heat sink. Um, so I have my big whaler here. Make sure it's hot enough, which it is. And let me just tin up the tin up the, 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 the tip a little bit. But let's throw some solder on here. Okay, that's one, two, okay, oh, I dropped some solder, which is probably not a good idea to drop solder onto the PCB, but that's good. Anyway, those connections are made. Um, now, technically, this needs to be attached. You could attach it on this side or on the underside. Um, I think I will attach it on the top side because I put my leads on the bottom side here. So where are my new leads? Here, here are the leads. I've already, these are some old needles I had made previously and I'm just gonna use them since I already have them. Um, so this long one here is actually the negative. The negative runs to the MOSFETs. The MOSFETs can close and then deliver the negative out this end here. And this is the positive. This little thing right here is the positive. So. I have to attach this positive to this square here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the lead a little bit. And again, you're not going to do this with a small soldering iron. And then I'm going to put some extra solder on this pad here. And then I'm going to try and join this. But again, this is only possible with a large soldering iron. Okay, that is connected nicely. Um, the negative goes on the bottom here. Because um, once the MOSFETs close, the energy will travel down to the bottom here. And this will be where your negative comes out. So I'll put a big blob there and I'll put a blob on the, on the uh, negative lead here. Okay, kind of tinned it up a little bit. Let's heat this up. Okay, it has flowed. Okay, that is connected. It, um, I, I wonder if I should just try and put this on the bottom here. I really don't want to. Um, should probably just put it on the top here. You know, I'm gonna put it on the top since I already got a big blob of, of solder on the top here. Now, I would like my small needle for this part, but I'm gonna try and make do with what I got. 
Okay, there I got two blobs. I'm gonna cut these leads a little bit. And now on this, this side here, okay, the longer lead is always positive, the shorter lead is always negative, and this gold line also means negative. So since this here is my negative, this center one here is my negative, I need to, um, this here, since this is my negative, this line is gonna go on that one and the positive will go on that one. So I'm gonna chop these leads a little bit, like this. And I'm going to try and get this to melt in here. Okay, that worked. And now I need to electrically connect this side. Again, I wish I had my small, my smaller soldering on just for this part. But that has, that has worked. So the capacitor is attached. And it is correct. So I think we are ready to test um, this new spot welder. So let me grab some batteries and we'll test it. Okay, I got some batteries we can test on. Now, I do like to put a piece of tape on the underside of these boards just because there is so much exposed, um, you know, copper and, and connections and that. And you could easily set this down on a piece of nickel and short. Um, and short out the board. So um, I do like to put a piece of tape on the underside just to be safe. Um, anyways, so here is the new spot welder and here is the old one. Let's start with the old one. I'm going to plug in my battery. Okay, there we go. It is up. Red is the uh, weakest. And I think, yeah, white is about, is like 40%. So I like white as a, as a good setting. Let us put a piece of nickel down. Okay. And this is some 0.15 nickel. And let's uh, see how my old one does and then we'll test the new one. Okay, those are beautiful spot welds, nice and deep. Um, exactly the reason this spot welder won the competition. Um, so now let us try the new spot welder. So let me unplug the old one. Okay, get it out of the way. Let's get a new piece of nickel here. Okay, let's plug in the new spot welder. Hope, make sure it doesn't go boom right out the gate. Okay, it is up. Let's go to white. Okay, so the interface is still the same, nothing has changed. And let's do a couple uh, spot welds here. Nice and deep spot welds, I would say equivalent. I do think I need to blunt in these tips a little bit. They seem a little sharp. Um, if the tips are too sharp, um, you, the, the current, um, you kind of get a single hot spot instead of a larger, um, you, you, want, you want the spot weld to spread a little bit. Um, so let me, let me take a little file and file this a little bit and round these tips over a little bit. And again, it's probably a good idea to unplug the spot welder at this stage. But do as I say, not as I do, because I definitely do some dumb things. Anyways, um, I've rounded those tips a little bit. Let's, uh, let's hit it, do a couple more spot welds. But really, those were really nice. Those were definitely powerful spot welds. Nothing wrong with that. And again, I think it comes a lot, it has a lot to do with the battery you are using and, um, 
you know, and and the the gauge of the wire and stuff like that. Ooh. There we go. Nice, nice spot weld. All right, let's do some nickel on nickel. This is some double nickel here. Those are some deep spot welds. I mean, that is, holy smokes, that is on there. So, yeah, this thing is, this thing is, the spot welder is every bit as good as my old one. Um, you might have wondered what, what happened there. You will get, every now and then when you're spot welding, you will get these kind of um, false starts where you get a, where you kind of blow through the nickel. And what happens is, when you put the needles down, if you aren't making good connection with the nickel when the spot welder fires, the spark will kind of jump and it will actually sort of burn through the nickel. You'll get like a, an instant hot spot. Instead of, the, instead of the currents sort of being spread around the nickel, you'll get an instant hot spot that'll burn right through the nickel. So it's important that you, you sort of put the needles down um, and uh, you know, with firm pressure, at a bit of an angle to spread the current a little bit. Whoop. See, I'm burning through the nickel here. Boom, good spot weld. Boom, good spot weld. I actually wonder if the capacitor is, is causing more of these burn throughs here. Boom, good spot weld, good spot weld. Yeah, these, you will have some of these burn throughs. They're not a big deal, but you know, the trick is to just, um, put the needle down and and have good pressure when you um, you know make sure the needles are in position and you have good pressure on the needles when you make contact with the battery you cannot have the the needle lightly touching the battery because the spark will jump and then it'll do a burn through on the nickel um, but yeah I think this new one is every bit as good as my old one. I will say this board is hot again, just like my old board. Um, these boards get, do get hot. That's why I put MOSFET coolers on the board. But um, yeah, I think this new one's every bit as good as the old one. And um, I think it just comes down to assembling it with good solder and some good quality needles. These are like 10 gauge needles with some eight gauge solid copper tips. And um, yeah. Um, this remains my favorite spot welder.